Mike check. What's up? What's up? Mike check. Mike check. What's up, team? We got to make sure we got the audio running. Uh, let's see. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. I think we live, baby. I think we live. Okay, y'all hear me? Uh, let me see. Okay, all good, all good. What's up, Kyle Preston? What's going on? Now, this is the pre-training. Something light, something light. This is the pre-training for, um, for um, our class tonight. Now, Keep in mind, keep in mind that uh, I we have class in, in Trend Trading Academy on Tuesdays, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, okay? And this week, I'm training twice. I trained last Tuesday, and I'm training today. My class started at 7 o'clock in Trend Trading Academy. So this is just a warm-up, help my YouTube people out real quick, something light. And um, if you guys want the full training or, or dive in deeper on things, join the academy. But we're starting at 7 o'clock with, with my actual uh, team uh, in the mentorship. So um, what's up, Eric? So I got so some of my people is already on. What's up, Bob? Uh, let me see. So let's let's dive into the charts and let's not waste any time. All right. So we're going to be back testing here. What's up, Steve? Um, I'm looking at people in my um, in Zoom right now. I'm looking at people in my Zoom and I'm also monitoring the chat on YouTube as well. So I got my hands full, but let's do it. All right, cool. So let's bring uh, trading view. I'm about to bring up the charts and G U G A. All right, so let me bring up the charts here and I think you guys can see it. So let's double check. Um, all right, so I think you guys can see my chart. Mic check, yep, everything is good. So let's dive in. So, um, one thing that I want to back test is so last last week we did a um a session part one and we were back testing moving averages the crossovers and we were trying to see that they work and we found out that the moving averages get you in late a lot of people already know that but the people that was requesting it I wanted to show them that so then I took it to the next step and I started building around it. So today we're not going to do moving averages, but we're going to look at another thing. So let me see. Somebody commented the other time. Uh, let me see. They want to back test the 200 EMA with stochastic oscillator setting five, three, and three. So let's continue our journey. Let's go to the hour chart. Now, for me, when you're back testing team, I want you to back test your session. All right, your session. I don't know what session Travis, shout out to uh Travis. Let me see. Uh hi, hi good. Travis Hi good. I guess that's his name. H A G O O D. So, but shout out to Travis for leaving this comment. He said he want to back test uh stochastic oscillator in the 200 EMA. So let's start from the one hour chart because the one hour chart will allow you to see the higher time frame information as well as you can get a good entry like a 15 minute by looking at the candles, by looking at the wicks. 
So I like to back test on the hour chart. So he want to look at the stochastic oscillator. So we got to pull up the stochastic. And let's see if this thing making money. And he want to look at the 200 EMA. So let's look at the 200 EMA. So let's go to indicators and let's type in EMA. And let's type in 200 input 200. And let's see if we can make this thing work. And let's see what else. And the stochastic. Let's add in the stochastic Oscar later. Stochastic. S T O C H. There we go. All right, and he want to see five, three, and three. Um, why? Oh no, that's the uh, EMA. Why didn't the oscillator come on? Let me try to add this oscillator in again. Oh no, it's right here. It's right here. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. So he want to see five, three, and three. I recommend fourteen, three, and three. Five, three, and three is too noisy. So let's make this uh, white so you guys can see it. And let's make it a little bit bigger and let's dive in. So let's go back in time and let's see what happened. So like, all right, so, okay. So basically what the rules is gonna be is when the stochastic is curling down from the top, okay? And when the market is underneath the 200 EMA, this is an exponential 200, five, three, and three. So let's put a line here and let's see how this thing works. Maybe I can build something around it or something. So here it is. So the market dropped down, right? Market closed down below. Now you want to take a sale. But if we replay this, The stochastic is already down. You see what I'm saying? The stochastic, so, I mean, you want to catch it when it's curling down. It, it's looking, it's already looking like, to me, it's, it's going to be late again. So now you want to, like, what do you want to do? You want to buy, you want to sell? So if you would have bought this, because it's, it's kind of, it's not really above the EMA, but the stochastic is not lining up for a sale. All right, so now this is like a buy situation right here, right? Because the stochastic is curling up. The market just closed above the 200 EMA. So you will go for a long in this situation. Put the stop loss below these candles. Go for a one-to-one. -one. Right there. And let's see. And I already, I think that's the loss. That's an L right there. So that don't, that's whack. So let's go back. Look at this one. Let's see how did this one do? Yeah, that's stochastic with this 200 EMA is trash. That's trash. I don't even think I'm gonna waste any more time with that. So now stochastic is curling down and this is a sale entry right here. You come up. Let's go for a one-to-one -one at least. We could go for more, but I don't want to be greedy with this. So let's go for a one-on-one -on -one and let's see if we can get the win on this one. So that was a win. All right, so fast forward this thing. <clears throat> so let's look at how this one played out. So right now we one for one. So this one, the stochastic was curling up. Finally, it closed above, right? So right here is curling up, telling you for telling you to go. The market is about to push up, but it's not above the 200 EMA yet. Now it's above the 200 EMA. See that? So now for me, I'm not taking a buy like that. Just so you guys know, just to start like kind of teaching you, I'm taking a buy on a red candle. 
So I would, the price would have to come back down to here, somewhere in here for me to get in for a buy. I can't buy that high. It would have to come back. So I like to get in on retest. So let's see, does it retest? At least, at least give me something like right there. No retest. All right, there we go. There go the retest. Okay, so that's a winner. That's how I like to enter in, team, like that. You see the retest like that? Wick entry. Let me check the comments. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Okay, cool. So let me read the comments. Break MSA trend line with the key levels. I'm glad I didn't end. need indicators to trade. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this one, this one is all right. I think that you will need to couple together more information with this. Stochastic, somebody want me to trade this. Uh, shout out to Travis for leaving the comment. He wanted me to test out the stochastic with the 200 uh, EMA. I would rather, let's see if we could go with taking off the EMA and add in the 50. I think the 50 would be better. You can already see how the 50 is starting to cruise around price. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is a beautiful thing. Now, I think that through 5, 3, and 3 is no good. Let's change the stochastic to 14, 3, and 3. 14, 3, and 3. So now let's see how this thing line up. So there's price sitting around a 50. It's at the bottom. We waiting for it to curl up. There you go. To me, that is a way better entry. Do y'all see that? What's up, uh, William Young? What's up, Janice Brown? um price action and retest is the best way yeah latoya cow that's the to me that's the best way i'm just helping some people out with wanting to test out what they like to do um helping people out where they are so you see the stochastic is curling up now we above the 50 i like i would rather take this setup over the other one so that would be I would still like to get in like I would like I, I probably would get in right here now because we so deep into this into this uh the market right here like this this action right here this market structure right here which we're, we're barely taking off from the 50 I still like to get in on red candles I would like for a candle to come back for me to get in but this wouldn't be a terrible entry the risk to reward Let's say you go for a long position. Stop loss is going to be like below it right up in here. And you could just go for a one-to-one. -one. And that's just the rule to it. Yeah. So that's a good one there. So Travis, um, to help you out, I would go with 14, three and three on a stochastic. And I would use the 50 SMA, the 50 simple moving average instead of the 200 EMA. And I feel like you will have way more wins because look, this is this is what I like to do. Let's take off the stochastic and let's look at market structure for what it is. I would rather put a trend line through here because price made a higher high right here through here, put a trend line, I call it the money line. All right. And when it break the trend line, you can get in on a retest. As it's coming in, you can wait for it to break the 50. Like, that's what I would like to do. You got you got way more like options this way. I would mark up. I will mark up this. um, This area right here. And that's money. Like that, that's money. Now, look, price already dropped down, came back up to this, to this, um, what is this called? This demand zone came, it, it broke through, it came back up. 
Now this is a supply zone. Let me make a market for this. This is a supply zone now. Cause look, I mean, price at that high level, price never um price never really consolidated at this peak area. Price never consolidated. So you just mark that up. That's money. At the same area here. And now you wait for price to break the trend line. That's telling you that the momentum is shifting. And you got this zone to go off of. So when it break this 50, it's out of there. Do y'all see my mindset on that? So Ron Mays, he said, that's what I'm talking about. That's how I trade. I trade, I put together my pieces like that. I don't need a stochastic. I don't need really the RSI. The only time I'm looking at the RSI is is when um i'm looking at divergence so then so let's so if you want to know the rules on a fibonacci somebody said can you show the fib ron said can you show the fib so when they broke the trend line this is when you can start pulling out the fibonacci somebody said easy money i am satrice renee easy money this is the hey if anybody is watching this Forget the moving average. I mean, forget the crossover of the moving averages. Forget the stochastic. I'm telling you, if you can get to this point, this is the money. This is where the money is. So, um, so what I was, what was I saying? The the Fibonacci. <clears throat> All right, cool. So let's see here. Okay. Um, want to know more, uh, Julius? If you want to know more, you just go to my link in the in the description section. Um, at seven o'clock, I have to. I have. I'm gonna go switch over and help my um, team in Trend Trend Academy. I will leave this live running for a little bit so you can kind of, you know, you can kind of stick around. But I wanted to do a pre-training for my YouTube family. But at seven o'clock, I have to teach my team. But I'll let you guys stick around for a little bit. Um, so pull out the Fibonacci. So look at this. We have a low point and we have a high point. Okay, this is when we can use the Fibonacci. So the market is pushing up. So start at the bottom and pull the Fibonacci to the direction of the market. So now we can start pulling up uh, golden zones. There's the golden zone. So now we know we are we can we can kind of gauge where to stop selling. This is a downtrend. This is our entry. We can stop selling when it gets to the 38.2 or the or the golden zone. So you you do y'all understand what I'm saying? Comment below if y'all understand what I'm saying. Like drop a fire emoji if you understand how I found this, how I set this up. This is this is how you this is how I trade. This is how I be profitable. Um, so delete the fib. And that's the golden zone there. Let's mark it up. And this is how I back test over and over and over. I, I back test this type of thing. So this gives me confidence. All right. So now as market is at our zone, wait, wait for it to close but uh, below the 50. Now, hold on, team. So, so check this out. If you wanted to sell at the trend line, Okay, let me stop sharing. If you want to sell at the trend line without a retest, take minimum goal. 15, 20 pips, take the money. Because what happens after a breakout? 80% of the time, I always tell my team this, what happens after a breakout? A retest. So why, so why would you want to Take the breakout entry 
and try to hold it all the way down 50 pips right off the bat. When you know good and well, there's 80% chance that a retest is going to come back up to make you, you know, back into drawdown. When you could have took that money, closed the trade out, after the breakout, you could have closed the trade out, waited for the retest, which mo more than likely will come, and then got back in again on the retest. You see what I'm saying? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Patrick, oh, what's up? Roses are red. It's good. I appreciate y'all for getting on. Hey, guys are coming. Please get this video a like. Please share it on like whatever social media platform you have so people can get this knowledge as well. We don't want to be selfish. We dominate by giving, but please share and uh, like this video. If you haven't subscribed, I'm doing this all the time. I'm doing this all the time now. So just, just a little bit of gems here and there, sprinkle it here and there so you guys can retain it and not try to feed you guys through a, through a fire hydrant. Just give you a little bit of cup of water, a little bit of knowledge here and there so you guys can soak it in and remember it. Look, this is the entry for the breakout right up in there. That's the breakout entry. When you take the breakout entry, as it's pushing through the trend line, you got 33 pips, okay? 33 pips. You can take 15, 20 of that, whatever you want, take the whole 30. But all I'm saying is that when it breaks this trend line, momentum is on your side. Use the heat wave with it. Momentum is on your side. Take the money because a retest is most likely going to come next. There's the retest. There's the pullback. After the breakout, there's the pullback. So now... This is, the, this is the second entry that you want. This is the real one that you want. And if you pull out a Fibonacci from this high to this low point, look where price is again. Price stops at the golden zone. It's not a coincidence. Price stops at the golden zone again. You guys just got to get saucy with it. You got you to gotta see the market. Market stops at the golden zone again. So this is second entry. Now we can now, you see what I'm saying? I just told you how to take the breakout, the mindset, wait for the pullback. Probably around the, the entry for the, the pullback is probably around a golden zone or another structure level. And then now we in there. All right. So that's the way the market played out. Um, I'm about to tap in today. Ron Mayes, what's up? Uh, where do you put your stop loss? The stop loss would be above this structure level. All right. You guys got to remember, look, the question is always, where's the stop loss? Where's the stop loss? Where's the take profit? It's a good question, but I always want you to remember. Remember that you heard it from me. All right. I'm your boy. Remember, you heard it from me. The stop loss is always going to be looking left and put it above the structure. All right. Put it above the structure looking, the, the nearest structure looking left. If you're taking a sale, it's going to be above the high point looking left. That's the safest place. You can try to put it 10 pips, but that's on you. The market may not cause for a 10 may not call for a 10 pip stop loss. It may be 15 today. It may be 25 tomorrow. The rule of thumb is put it above the structured level. All right, so let's go take a look at this. It's seven o'clock, it's time for me to go to class. It's time for me to teach the team. We got a Q and A. Um, Let me see. No problem. I'm looking at the comment. I got the comments right here. Um, when will be the next little drip, Jay? Um, that's money right there. Saucy. I'm about to tap in. What's up, boom, Frank? What's up, Frank? Who trades crypto? Only forex. I trade only forex. 
at the moment. Uh, d- does this work on gold or BTC USD? It works on gold. I don't, I don't know about crypto. It works on gold for sure. All right, cool. So, all right. So this is, um, so stop loss is always going to be above the structure level. So the stop loss will be up here. That's stop loss. That's the safest place to put it. Take profit. You got the 38.2 sitting right up in here. You can stop. You can take profit at the 38.2, which is right up in here. There's the 38.2. Or you can go, go try, you can move up the stop loss and profit right above this area right here and try to run into the golden zone. That's up to you. That's up to you. But that's how I would do it. All right. Um, let's see here. Now, um, now let me see. When I first let me uh stop sharing because I'm about to um switch over to help the team. Um, this first 30 minute part was for um my YouTube family because I love y'all. I gotta you know spend time with both. And it's seven o'clock, so I'm about to spend some the rest of the seven to eight with the um trend trading academy mentorship students, and so that's what we're about to do. We're about to get it in. Uh, let's see, let's see. I'm about to tap in. What's up, Angel Brad? What's going on? Sorry, So let's dive in. All my people, we got Q and A's going on. No joke, Jay. Ever since I so uh, Roundtree, he said, "No joke, Jay. Ever since I started using the trend line with the stochastic and Fibo, it's been easier to trigger my breakout entries and also exits. Am I wrong for just rolling with that? No, um, Roundtree. No, you're not wrong with you're not wrong for that, Roundtree. Um, the trend line is the game changer part." All right, the trend line and the and the Fibonacci. The trend line and the Fibonacci together is powerful. Okay. And the stochastic is an extra. Just don't let the stochastic trip you up and fool you. Go with price action. Price action is king over the stochastic. So um, if you guys want to um, ask a question, I know some people had a hard time in London session. If you want to ask a question, please um, raise your hand. I can um, get you in so you can ask your question. I can um, unmute you and so you can ask a question. <clears throat> All right. So said, I bought my trade journal a few days ago and I can't log into the TGP. Oh, you got to reach out um, to Joe, uh, Tori. You got to reach out to Joe. I can't really help you with that. <clears throat> okay, so Julius say, um, if I'm trading London session and I have a setup that doesn't break a retest until the Asian session, due to a ranching market, would you still enter the trade or is that a trade dead? So, Julius Jones, that's a good question. He's saying, I got a trade set up, but it it didn't happen during his trade session. All right. Well, if it goes over to Asian, Asia session, I'm good with that. That I can't trade that session. It's slow, but but then again, sometimes it breaks out, but I will call it a no trade day. Here's the thing: if the trade if the trade ha- if the trade doesn't happen during London, then that's a no trade day. I give myself 1 a.m. Eastern to 5 a.m. Eastern. If my trade doesn't happen during that time, I don't care. It's a no go. All right. And also, also, um, somebody said, how early do you do you mark up your charts for London? I mark up my charts 12 a.m. Eastern time. London doesn't open up until three, but sometimes you get a crossover action between 
JPY in London, you can get a breakout. So I wake up at 1 a.m. Well, I wake up at 12, the mark of charts, and I look for trades between 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. So. All right. So let's see here. Mason, what's going on, man? You are muted. Yo, what up, brother? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, man? Talk man, to I just uh, real fast, I wanted to say thank you. In the three months that I've been a part of your membership, man, my trading has exploded. My education, my knowledge, everything about this. I can't wait to see what I'm going to be in at six months. Mason, man. Hey, I'm glad that you've been plugging in, taking it serious. A lot of people think that plugging in is, is the battle. That's just scratching the surface. We got to put this work in. And shout out for you for doing that, bro. Absolutely, absolutely. Yo, man, if I can ask really fast, I've been trying to get this question answered. I've been Googling my butt off and just trying to uh, get this uh, really settled settled in for uh, a straight answer on things. But uh, on currency heat wave, let's say, for example, that we're looking just before the London session and we're seeing the pound is at maybe like a strength of like two. And then maybe like the Aussie dollar is at a strength of like seven. Um, so what I'm always kind of looking at, what I'm trying to like settle my, for myself is if I'm looking at GBP AUD or GBP USD, if the pound is the weaker one, where, would the opposing currency be the one with where its strength is higher to influence which direction it's going to go? Okay. So let's, let's, let's pull it up right quick. Hold on. For sure. Let me, uh, let me pull that up so you can actually see. So give me, I'm, pu I'm pulling up the heat wave right here on the computer. Gotcha. And I'm going to share it with you right quick. Um, let's see, it should be pulling in. Oh, they I updated my Mac to, um, to the new one and it's blocking it. Hold on, let me, uh, oh, man. I got I to gotta turn that off. I'm trying, to, trying to block me out here. There it is. So I should be good now. Okay. Yeah, it should be good. So some systems app store and identify developer. Allow apps downloaded from okay. So I feel like it should be loading up now. Can you hear a bunch of music in the background uh, of me? Is that too loud? Uh no, it's good. Okay, cool. Sorry, I'm so why is loading up, man? I, I hope I hope. I hope this stupid thing loads up, man. So look, while while GBP, let's say GBP USD. What did you did you have an experience like what was the market doing? Um going up or going down or sideways? I, I think I feel like it was moving up. Um I, I feel like I'm too new to the entire aspect of really understanding of what market movement is doing for me to actually identify. Um whether it was just in like some temporary consolidation. I can't remember completely of what I was looking at. It's just been a couple of times where I've been trying to use that as a confluence for uh, looking to enter a trade in. But then I'm like, but if it's, you know, if the pound is weak right now and the other is strong, am I looking to um, buy for whether the pound, whether the uh, price of it's going to move up? But I've I have seem to. I got like, you. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Che so check this out. So my thing is running real slow, like trying to open up. Okay. So let's say for an example, right here on the chart, um, right up in here, price price really haven't. Uh, I'm trying to simulate a situation here. I see it. I see it all the time. I know I like the back of my hand. So the 50 moving average is right here. It's turning red. Price is underneath it. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. If if GBP is weak right here. Because look, price price has already been dropping, right? Mm -hmm. It dropped from here, it came back, it dropped again, it came back and dropped again. So now that it's right here, if GBP is weak at like a three, let's say GBP is at like a three on the currency heat wave. Right. And the USD is a, at like a six, you need to sell this. Because, because price is going to most likely drop because GBP is weak. This is just a temporary pullback. And you want to start selling that. You want to get in on this pullback right here. Right. So that's how you look at it. So 
that means the market is about to drop. Also, because you saw the market dropping all this time, that's why GBP is weak because the market has been dropping. Uh, buyers are not in the market currently. That's what it's saying. There's more sellers than buyers. Right. So you want to sell that GB? I mean, USD is strong. You gotta, you gotta look. You gotta hold on. Let me just tell you this. Hold on. Let me mute right quick because that music is starting to get loud. Hold on. How, I don't even know how to mute you. Here, I got me. I'll, okay. I'll mute myself. Okay. okay. Thank you, my bro. So look. So people say, look, when I see it, when I see the market or the currency heat wave, USD at a six. GBP at like a um hold on GBP at like a uh a three it's already too late you see what I'm saying they be saying it's already too late but here's the thing though you gotta find a situation uh you gotta find a situation before it get like that I like I, I, I remember it was somebody that said I like to find them when they're even I like to find GBP on the currency heat wave at a three or whatever. And I like to find the other currency pair at a three as well. So he liked, he liked to see the strength even. And I, I was like, oh, that sounds good, but it don't make sense to me. I was like, it don't make sense. Like, what do you do after that? But you know what? Uh, two years later, it, I understand how to put that together. If you need to have a trade set up, whether it's a triangle, whether it's a wedge pattern, wh whether it's head and shoulders, double tops, double bottoms, Fibonacci zones, supply and demand zones, you need to have a trade set up. So when the market comes back to those trade set up areas where you look for entry, that is when you want the, the heat wave to start changing in strength at those key areas in the market because once it once it takes off it's over it's going to show that G usd is strong gvp is weak and you're going to see the market dropping you missed your entry try to find it when it's half and half create a trade setup and start looking for entries at that at those key zone areas so mason mason for an example where would you look for an entry on a head and shoulders pattern talk to me baby what, what do you think and i'm gonna show you what do you think where would you get an entry in on a head and shoulders pattern you still there or you left me there i am oh, okay sorry i thought i was a uh, thought i had unmuted um yeah i'll be trying to look forward on the right shoulder wouldn't you right there so look at this this is a head and shoulders right price, price is playing around now it's coming back up uh, let's say for an example, hold on. Let's say for an example, uh, let's say, let me see, price is kind of messing around. Then it pops up, right? Messes around, that's the head part. Then it starts dropping, all right? And now it's starting to mess around now. Right here, you start, you need to start building a trade setup. You need to put the trend line there, right? <laughs> and you need to mark up the right shoulder. You need to cut the head off. Cut the head off. Usually, and you need to pull out the Fibonacci. Am I leaving you or are you with me so far? No, you. Uh, I'm, I'm with you so far on everything. I'm uh, uh, almost through the 18th video on the beginner section and everything. And I got to tell you, I got to okay. go through popular chart patterns over and over again. Get, trying to get head and shoulders down, my man. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on. I got to... Hold on, let me see. Okay. But yeah. So no, I, I can see. So you want to pull out? That. Yeah, you want to pull out the Fibonacci from this high point to this low point, and usually price okay. will pull back to that golden zone area. Okay. Right. So there we go. Mark up that golden zone. Now this one, this zone right here, now. this home, this zone right here is usually the the like the uh, right shoulder left shoulder type of situation so let's delete the fib boom so now you ready to go now do it make sense so now if price rejects here if price rejects here all you do 
it's it's go ahead and pull out the trend line. Pull out, well, I could have did that better. Pull out the little trend line right here. And whenever, whenever it decides to break through, you sell it. Or if it decides to keep going up, well, let it go back up because then that's going to give you a better risk to reward. Right. And so upon looking at the chart when it is creating that kind of pattern and that I would be like, all right, I'm ready to sell. Then upon checking the heat wave and it's looking as you were talking about with uh, um, both of the currencies being at even levels. Is that what you mean? All right. So now let's talk about it. Good job bringing me back there. Good job with that. Sure. So right up in here, when it gets to these areas. Oh, this is a good one, bro. Good question, bro. Look, this is where the fake outs be. Because if it break outside of this neckline, I mean, not the neckline, because the neckline is down here. This is the neckline. Let me put a line there. If it if it breaks on top of this um, right shoulder, left shoulder zone, you may be like, oh, this is a buy. I'm about to ride it up to the moon. But it may just be coming up testing the golden zone. So you have to be very careful. I would, I will almost rather take the buy once it breaks and retest here. Then I'll take it. I would like to see a retest, but it may just come up here and then just shoot down. So I just want you to be weary of that, okay, for the fake out. This is the head and shoulder. Yeah, uh, no, uh, G Odd actually caught me that I think like two nights ago that I had the entire thing set up just as uh, exactly as you had marked up the charts and everything. I was waiting around for, must have been like an hour and a half blasted through my stop loss then dropped off but i was like oh man it was just one of those things i'm like i stuck by the rules you know i kept everything you were exactly right on your setup and everything but just one of them things yeah yeah so so now when price start hitting this area when price was starting to come up to this left shoulder right shoulder area right you were supposed to be looking at the heat wave okay when because this is the key area this is the key zone area look at that heat wave and and say okay price is coming up here if, if GBP is still looking like it's weakening out, it's getting to like three and USD look like it's getting stronger, we may be able to go ahead and take a sale as it's coming from this trend line. Because obviously that's why, it, that's why I like for the trend line to be there. Because if it comes, if it rejects at the shoulder level and it comes all the way and break the trend line, it's out of there. It's out of there. I don't know for how long, but at the, but do you get what I'm saying about the heat wave? This is where you want to start looking for the strength, the opposites. You in order for this thing to break the trend line, USD would have to be like at a five or a six, and GBP would have to be like at a three or a two. Exactly. I want a three. I want a three-digit difference between the two, because I don't want to take this when it's five and five. That's going to be consolidation. They're, they're fighting back and forth. Buyers and sellers are fighting backwards and forwards when the heat wave is at a five and a five. When, when the heat wave is at a three and a three, that means it ain't going to go nowhere. It's just going to consolidate because they're both weak. When it gets to, get to these areas of the trade setup, these pivotal, these pivotal moments, these pivotal zones, these very crucial zones, I want to look at the currency heat wave and see a difference there. And then when it break that trend line, bro, it's out of there. That's the money line. All right. So now let's say, let's say it doesn't break the trend line and it just kind of plays around. Let it play around. Let it play around, bro. Because the trend line is going to keep you safe. Trust me. How many times have I sent the trade set up out my bro? And six hours later, I come out with, all right, here's the after. 45, 50 pips. It, sometimes they take time. They will move. We just have to be patient. Straight. Straight. You see yep, what I'm saying? But Absolutely. I don't want to give you, I, I, I can talk about this all day, Mason. I just want to give you what you asked me for. Did I, did I help you with identifying when to look at the currency heat wave? Bro, you always help. And yeah, this actually uh, sets the record straight for error, a lot of different things. It's just is going to come down to looking at charts and keep on monitoring for uh, when those situations arise and then uh, getting into the habit of being able to check the wave at that point. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, bro. And when you combine all of that together, bro, I'm telling you, bro, it, the money you will you will follow the money. You will follow the money. Now, just to set the record straight. 
the currency heat wave is the last thing that we look at. That is not, that is right. not, we don't, we don't, we don't find trades around the currency heat wave. We find trade mm -hmm. through supply and demand zones, trend lines, market structure. And then when we want to pinpoint those entries, we go to the currency heat wave. Now, look, I'm giving, I'm giving too much game away. I got to cut the, the YouTube live off and uh, I got to stop the stream. YouTube, all my YouTube family, I will continue this again later. But I got to put all my attention to the team right now um, in, in Trend Train Academy Mentorship. But I love all my YouTube family. Please 